your eyes again and keep closing. The main theory we're trying to test is that the, the cerebellum, which is a very beautiful part of the brain at the back of the brain, just at the top of the spinal cord, uh, that that is involved in hand-eye coordination. So children who are less good at hand-eye hand coordination would have a, probably a smaller cerebellum and a cerebellum that's less well connected to the rest of the brain. And so we're using both um, lots of hand-eye coordination games that we're testing our children with and then we're asking some of them to come back into the scanner to then to relate to the, the brain area with the, with the hand-eye coordination skill. Put this glove on and when one of the alien noses lights up, be ready and pinch it, just like that. Dyspraxia or DCD um, is not very well known and I think it's, it's just difficult for children who have it because they have to explain themselves over and over again or you as a parent have to explain over and over again and I think it's easy for them to get either overlooked um, or just kind of pigeonholed into oh, they can be a bit naughty sometimes and actually they're not. Yeah I'm good at throwing the ball just not good at catching. You can let it balance once if you want. If you compare it with a condition such as ADHD or dyslexia, um, there are probably uh, dozens and dozens of studies on, on those topics, and it's hundreds in some cases, but on, on the coordination disorder deficit, um, there's only five or six published studies and about a few more in, in progress, so about 10 or 12 around the world have been done on this condition. Um, yet it's very similar to the other conditions, it's very similar to ADHD and, and some parts of autistic spectrum conditions and dyslexia so it really should be studied as with those conditions in the same in the same sort of uh, theoretical background one more time yay <laughs> dcd condition is, is it's the sort of a, primarily that the disorders and the difficulties that children have are with movement and coordination so generally they're they're able to pay attention well they're able to read and write or at least read quite well but but it's the producing the movement and coordinating the different parts of their body that they have problems with. The previous studies. One issue in um, studying DCD is that um, there are several different kinds and, and the researchers in general can't agree on a, on a single definition of this disorder. So you might find children who have problems in balance and posture and sitting still or riding a bike, other children with problems in handwriting. Um, and because the cerebellum is a really well organised structure, it, it could be possible to relate specific um, movement problems with specific parts of the cerebellum. Eventually one day you would hope that it might be possible to treat different parts of uh, the cerebellum, maybe with different, different drugs or you could um, try and ameliorate the, the loss of parts of the cerebellum if that's, if that's the case. Um, so it could be that you could design the therapies based on precisely which parts of the cerebellum are damaged and, and which disorders the children have. One of the biggest things is that um, it's not an obvious problem. Parents all find that um, teachers are the adults um, who don't know the children will look at them and think, well, they're completely fine. Why are they behaving like that? Why are they not sitting still? Why can they not keep quiet? Why are they not holding their pen properly? Whatever. Um, because it's, it's not an obvious sort of disability. How was oh, it? Have you got your shoes? It was really oh, did you good. leave your shoes in there? Yeah. Shoes. Oh, we'll go back and get your shoes then. Oh, well, never mind. Do you want to get changed?